purpose of the Antique Plate Committee is to adjudicate on all silver that's sent to the assay office for an official opinion. Now these pieces, by their very nature, tend to be those which there is some suspicion about. And we adjudicate on whether it is right or wrong within the terms of the 1973 Hallmarking Act. The committee was formed in 1939 by a group of dealers who decided there was a serious lack of information and education about fake silver and how to identify it and what sort of fakes there were. And since that date, over 27,000 pieces have passed through the hands of the Antique Plate Committee. The committee is made up currently of 15 members and we meet at the Goldsmiths Hall here in London four times a year. And those members are drawn from the trade, from auction rooms, museum curators, from dealers and working silversmiths. It's a very, very well represented committee. Between all of us, we have a, a varied but tremendous pool of knowledge and we come to a very democratic decision as to whether something is right or wrong. I have in front of me a selection of silver, all of which is fake, and they fall into the three main categories of fake. So if we take the first piece, we've got this fantastic looking cake basket, wonderful Rococo decoration, made from the mid-18th century. Turn it over. It doesn't look too bad from the back, but if we look round the outer edge here, there is a solder line, which includes the set of marks. Now that would never happen in the manufacture of a cake basket. It would all be made in one piece. So these marks have been cut out from something else and been soldered into this much heavier piece. So that's why it's illegal. The next category are fake marks. And I have here a wool sconce from the late 17th century. And if we turn it over, it seems to have a perfectly decent set of marks on the back. But this is one of a pair. And if we line up the marks together, it can be seen that they are struck absolutely in the same position. These marks have actually been produced by casting. So both sets of marks were cast off another genuine piece, but unfortunately completely illegal. This next piece is a very impressive large spoon, purporting to be from the 17th century but if we turn it over, it's actually struck with some of the best fake steel punched marks any of us have ever seen. It has a date letter here for 1683, but it was actually made about 300 years later in the 1980s. A beautifully made piece of silver, but it's completely fake. And lastly, my favorite fake in the Goldsmiths Company collection of dodgy pieces, this extraordinary looking teapot. And this has actually been made out of a 16th century communion cup. And if we put it alongside a perfectly genuine communion cup, we can see that the shapes of the bowls are very similar, but because it's changed from a communion cup into a teapot, Therefore, it's a change of use and becomes a fake item. The committee makes its decisions on three basic levels. Firstly, its pool of knowledge, its experience, just generally looking at something, you can usually tell whether it's right or wrong. Then we examine the hallmarks, Hallmarks are a wonderful guide to dating and also authenticity. That's why they were brought in. So maybe the marks are fake, and that's an area which is probably the hardest of all to determine. 
The final thing is that every piece is scientifically tested, which helps us determine exactly when a piece was made. Once the piece has been examined by everyone and a decision is made, if it is right, the piece is sent back to the owner without anything happening to it. But if it's wrong, the marks are usually cancelled. Once the item has been brought within the law, it is then sent back to the owner who can sell it quite legally.